Hello everyone and welcome to Picture Nature Based Enterprise Session or Picture Poznan for all of those social media gurus among you out there. We're Isabel Fletcher and Esme Quidman, uh, your facilitators for this session this afternoon. We both work with Horizon Nua and Esme also works with Trinity College, but at Horizon Nua we manage the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform of which the five great pitches lined up for you today are members of. Yes, so the Connecting Nature Enterprise Platform, if you're not familiar with it, um, is a community of nature-based enterprises and a marketplace for suppliers of nature-based solutions. And this morning we already uh, presented uh, shortly about uh, nature-based enterprises, uh, but I'll quickly summarize here again. So nature-based enterprises are businesses or organizations who use nature sustainably at the core of everything they do uh, and of course while well, taking into account a positive impact on biodiversity and nature uh, and uh, local economies um, and uh, if you've joined one of our um, community of practice sessions you've already seen in what kind of sectors nature-based enterprises uh, are active uh, and all of these uh, sessions have been led by our uh, team of amazing ambassadors uh, from the connecting nature enterprise platform um, so if you if you're not registered yet on the platform, uh, I would really encourage you to to register uh, now or after the session, of course, uh, because uh, we have we have a long lineup of speakers. Great. Well, we heard also during the policy dialogue just now about the importance of nature based enterprises, especially when it comes to meeting the demand for nature based solutions, and that there is a shortage of suitably skilled enterprises out there to meet that burgeoning demand. So in this session. We'd like to show you the diversity of nature-based enterprises and hand the floor over to them as they pitch their innovative businesses, products, services and projects. Some of the enterprises you will hear from are quite new and others are more established. All have compelling pitches. Yes, and just to explain a bit about how the pitch works. So each enterprise has three minutes, <coughs> minutes to present their business, product, service or innovation. And because the time is tight, uh, they will be stopped at three minutes. So pictures, um, be ready. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments for any of the enterprises pitching today, post them in a chat. Um, and um, because we have time for one question after, after each pitch. Uh, but also don't forget to visit them uh, at their expo booth in the main events area after the session, uh, because they'll all be there as well. Great. So first up, we have Louis Dieger from a company called Commensalist, and they're based in Bruges in Belgium. Louis, you have three minutes. Take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Louis Dieger from Belgium, and uh, my company is called Commensalist. And Commensalist, it's a kind of way how organisms in nature interact with each other. You have parasites. You probably all know what a parasite is, but you also have commensalist. That is uh, one organism that helps an other organism by just being there. For example, if a bird nests in a tree, the bird helps the tree because the bird eats damaging insects and the tree helps the bird. So it's a coincidental working together. And this is the philosophy of commensalist farm design. So we design farms, um, not just any farms, uh, but sustainable farms. Uh, it's all based on land restoration, restoration agriculture, and it's our goal to make as much uh, hectares or acres sustainable as possible. We do this via food forest design, agroecology, agroforestry, and permaculture. Um, so our mission is um, to make as much hectares or acres of land sustainable as possible, but also to inspire as much people as possible, because uh, it's not just um, the, doing the real thing in the ground, changing uh, the physical things. 
it's only a part of the solution. What we really need to do is change people, their minds. And that is why every project we start, we really delve into the DNA of the people involved in the project, because every project is just as strong as the people behind it. So we always go digging in who are the people behind this project. For example, a project in Kenya we are doing or a project in Nepal we are doing. We first go and look at the capabilities of the people themselves. We go and look at the strengths. So what, what do they want to do? What, what's this, their inner desire? And we use this power of them to really build a very strong project. Um, and um, I was talking about um, Nepal and Kenya, for example. Um, our clients, who are they? They're people who are landowners. They own land and want to do something good for this planet with, with their land. Um, they want to start a farm, a sustainable farm. But um, we reinvest the profits we, made, uh, we make with people, um, with, with clients, uh, mostly in Europe, we reinvested in worldwide projects in need. So, for example, um, a project in Nepal where we're working on right now, they, they need our design help and we, we offer it, uh, it them for free uh, because we believe that a company is just as sustainable uh, as, as, as the way we, uh, we manage the company. So, uh, in this way, we want to be part of this new economy where we do not just, our main mission is transform land, we also want to help people doing it. Well done, Louis. That was, yeah. that was really good. Bang on three minutes. Esme, you have a question. Three minutes, definitely. Yes. I was I looking at the watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you mentioned you reinvest your uh, profits as an enterprise. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your business model. We only have one. Yeah. We have only have one minute to to tell everyone. One minute. About that. Well, it's very simple. If you uh, if if a client wants us to design their farm, they pay a, a fixed fee um, because uh, we, we're gonna explore how how much it will cost and uh, percentage of uh, of of this uh, money will go into education and another percentage will go into uh, the help of other people, their clients. So it, it it's really simple, as a matter of fact. Okay. It's less than a minute if you Great. have another yeah question. that's way less than a minute <laughs> thank you thank you okay uh thank you lewis and uh, then we will now introduce the next speaker and our next speaker has a video uh it, her name is turid wolf knutsen i hope i pronounced this correctly from in london in norway uh, and she represents the the horizon 2020 fusikos project um so if we could play her video my name is Turid Wulf Knutsen from Inlande County, Norway. I'm about to show you a teaser from the learning platform Fusikos VR, which was co-developed by Inlande County, the Norwegian Geotechnical Institute, and VEA, the Green Vocational School, together with the developer Soprasteria. The game currently shows nature-based solutions in Norway, Italy, France, and Spain, and is designed so that additional examples can be added in the future. What you're about to see are some snapshots of each of the four locations in the platform. While it will not give you the full 3D experience, I do hope it can pique your interest. Enjoy. Welcome to the world of Fusikos VR. We are about to embark on a virtual journey to learn about nature-based solutions and see how these can be applied to help manage natural hazards. Mitigation measures are in place protecting the village, but sometimes the snow conditions are so extreme that the existing measures are not enough to protect the village and evacuation is necessary. As you can imagine, the avalanche risk is a source of fear and uncertainty for the village residents. A proposed solution is to let the river flow naturally for normal conditions, but to protect the low-lying developed property and farmlands from extreme floods. A nature-based solution for this is to build a flood barrier. As the flood water rises, the barrier protects the land behind the barrier 
but lets the riparian forest get its much-needed flooding. By locating the barrier some distance away from the river, we give the river more room to maneuver. This is called a receded barrier. Watch out! Oh, good thing nobody got hurt. This slope is a cut through a moraine ridge formed by the glacier during the last ice age. The material is called a till, a soil type which consists of a mix of all grain sizes. Rock falls and small slides hitting the road is a recurring problem. And unfortunately, I think there were some technical issues with her that she couldn't join us today. So we will move directly on to our next pitch, who is Daniel Bush. And Daniel is coming from a company, representing a company called Plant Party that are located in Berlin in Germany. Over to you, Daniel, three minutes. Hello everybody, um, we are Daniel and Stav. Um, we are here to share with you our natural-based enterprise idea called Plant Party, which is uh, still in a very initial uh, stage. Uh, the major problem we aim to address with Plant Party is the lack of a holistic impact assessment tool for NBS projects and green spaces. Um, we believe that understanding how green spaces perform over time and in different aspects from social and environmental to economic can improve significantly the management and implementation processes and create more resilient and sustainable nature-based solution projects. Um, green space monitoring is often done with in situ measurements that are not scalable. And uh, we think that when we design technology, we have to think about scale from the very beginning. And the slides we are going to show you are a rough visualization of our vision for the tool that will help us deliver these holistic impact assessments. The tool will allow to select an area of interest and the temporal scale to be analyzed, including future analysis. The program will then use publicly available data, mostly remote sensing data, to perform the analysis in the area of interest. We can even merge Earth observation data with socioeconomic data. The assessment will produce results in maps and time series to reveal the development of different indicators over time. These indicators could be, for example, the cooling effect or the increase in biodiversity. Um, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> based on the collected data, uh, machine learning models could help us make um, predictions for the future. And finally, we could also produce a report on the performance of the nature-based solution over time and give recommendations for uh, various interventions. Uh, the results could also be used to compare different projects and their impacts. And the type of uh, services that we want to offer could have uh, multiple applications from cities that are looking to monitor their green assets to companies who would like to uh, certify their projects. Um, yeah, I see we still have some time. And that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Daniel and stuff. Um, I thought three minutes would be very challenging, but it seems to go okay for every one of you. That's great. Um, so I uh, have a question for you as well, of course. Um, but because this is quite a new concept and quite a new company, um, and you mentioned in your application that you'd like to have feedback on your concept, I kind of wanted you to, get, to give you the floor um, to ask the participants of this session if uh, if there's anything you are looking for in speci specifically, so people can join you later in the in your booth and um, discuss that. So, yeah. would you like to? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so, as you said, we are in a very initial stage, and for us, it's really important to identify the needs uh, in the industry. So, for us, for example, it would be really interesting to hear 
what are the most important indicators um, that should be measured. We talked about the cooling effect, but of course there are other indicators and other ecosystem services that these nature-based solutions provide. Um, it could be an increase in biodiversity or even socioeconomic effects. So that's something um, uh, we would like to get feedback on for sure. Or any okay. other feedback on the on the feasibility of the of the concept and uh, maybe even tips for developing our business. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Great. So yeah, everybody that has feedback for uh, Daniel and staff, they can go to their expo boots after or send them a direct message on their speaker profiles. And then I guess we are going to the next speaker, the next next picture, and that is Angel Cerezo from. Cream Studio Arquitectura. Great Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I need to practice, practice on my Spanish here, but uh, from Barcelona in uh, Spain. Um... Hello. Do you hear me well? Uh, well, my name is Angel Cerezo. We are Cream Studio Architecture, as you, as you mentioned before. We are a design and creative uh, architecture office developing uh, landscape and sustainable projects. We are in Barcelona, as you said. Let's go to the previous slide. Yeah, uh, there's the first slide. Yeah, well, uh, we, we would like to, in three minutes, a very short time, but our company is making innovative and design projects. This one is one that we uh, design and constructed. This is some kind of innovative design project. This is a park of 12 hectare. In this 12 hectare, we relate this with, a, with the future and the present of the green cities, with the circular economy of the water, and this is related with the close cycles and sustainability. It's also related with the climate change and the scarcity of resources. And also it's related with landscape innovation, biodiversity and preservation of the ecosystems. This park was uh, started in 2015. We start to design some uh, phases and some uh, areas of the park, and now it's almost all constructed. The client, the, the client commission, uh, asked to do to design and construct all these phases. The client is uh, Akbar, that is Suez, is the most uh, big company of water. I don't know. I think in the world, or maybe in Spain for sure, and maybe in Europe, they are everywhere. In, in Barcelona, they have this big tower, the Torre Akbar. In this park, what we we design are different phases. Uh, uh, the park is called it Park de les Aigües, that the, the translation in English is Park of the Water, that they have also their own uh, museum of the water. Uh, the idea is to, to develop this park uh, from the beginning with different kind of sustainable and drainage uh, systems, like suits and nature-based solutions. The one that I'm showing you is only three examples of this uh, of this park, of these phases that we design and construct. You can see there are also some images during the construction site. And there are different kind of uh, systems of suits, like geoceldas, Atlantis, a permeable pavement, infiltration, trench, and uh, rain garden also we implement there, uh, and also filtered drains. And this capture, collect the water, and this maximize the permeability of the soil the infiltration and the retention of the rainwater on the place. Because on the place under, we have an aquifer 30 meters deep. And this is the, was the most important uh, uh, objective to us, to everything that we do in the park, every design that we did was to uh, make a better place, to make a better uh, uh, atmosphere, landscape. And we are a company that uh, without uh, we start with uh, without knowledge in 2015. And now 2021, I think we are one of the good companies that we make these projects for this, for example, this one of, of it, this is for Akbar, a water company of Barcelona and in Spain. Thank you. Great, thank you, Angel. That was uh, that was really interesting. Um, and bang on your three minutes here. No issues with timing today. I have a question for you. It's kind of yeah. related to what you were saying at the at the very end there about you know the use of the land and so on. And there was something I picked up on in your application that to to pitch is that you you talked about reading or understanding a place. Yeah. <laughs> As a landscape architect. Yeah. How would you? understand the place can you tell us that in one minute uh, to understand the place is some kind of uh, a, a way to, to to be critical with the regionalism to be critical and to know for example which kind of trees do you have to put which kind of vegetation 
that is uh, autochton or similar to autochton. This is some kind of way to read the place. This is not uh, this is not a unknown place. This is always related with something, a river, uh, a farmer, uh, a countryside. And in our place was related with the river. And this is why also it's so interesting from the beginning to implement actions with water. Okay, because I picked up also that, you know, you said unless you care for a place and you're invested in a place, the, yeah. the damage almost an architect could do is yeah. terrifying. It's some kind of your instinct that you learn, no? When you yeah. learn, when you make landscape projects, uh, urban design project, I think you learn. Otherwise, there are older designers that they don't care of the place and they just do tabula rasa. And, uh, we are not this kind of architect. Like and this is why we are very happy to be part of this connecting nature, because it's also another part of our work to connect with the nature. Yeah. Indeed. Listen, thank you. Thank you, Angel, for that. And we are moving on today to our last speaker, or our last picture. And our last picture is Jan Cafaro from Feel Good Forest Bathing in the UK. So Jan, I think, has a video for us, and we're going to play that first, and then we'll get back to Jan with a question afterwards. Hello, I'm Jan and thanks for joining me. I'm here to introduce Feel Good Forest Bathing. So there's a growing understanding, isn't there, that it's our disconnection from nature that has brought us to this environmental crisis, and that there is a desperate need for nature-based solutions to help us find our way back to sustainability. Feel Good Forest Bathing does that by helping people reconnect with the nature on their doorstep. And research shows that by connecting with nature in this way, it leads to an increase in our pro-environmental behaviours. Feel Good Forest Bathing offers online courses in nature connection for well-being. The students come together from all over the world and together they practice the activities in their local neighbourhood. The activities are simple and fun and engaging they help us connect with nature very directly through the senses, through sight, hearing, touch, smell. And these practices have been shown to be powerfully beneficial for our health and well-being. As well as reducing stress and chronic inflammation, symptoms of depression and anxiety, the practice has been shown to have wider benefits. People come to fall in love with the nature in their neighbourhood and they really care about it, they feel protective. And so this can lead to people coming together at the grassroots level to clean up a local stream, plant a tiny forest or welcome nature into their own gardens. Nature connection also impacts how we respond to other people. So entering this calm, open, curious state of mind has an effect on our body and our social responses. We become less focused on ourselves and our own concerns and we feel more kindly, more cooperative. We feel more care about the community as a whole. And these effects can last for weeks afterwards. That's a good thing, isn't it? If you or your organization are working for sustainability, then please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe there's a way we could work together for the common good. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Great. Thank you for that lovely video, Jen. And uh, I don't know about you, Isabel, but uh, I definitely feel less stressed after watching that already. <laughs> definitely a lovely way to wind down after the afternoon. Yes. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Jan, of course, I have a question for you as well. Mm. Um, so uh, you mentioned that you're um, being open to working with organizations as well as individuals. And I'm kind of curious in what ways you could your course could help an organization. Mm. 
Sure. So um, Nature Connection research shows that it reduces stress and it gets us into a calm, clear, focused, creative state of mind. And any organization would benefit from its members being in that place while they're working. Um, but as I mentioned in the video, it also gets us into a more pro-social state of mind so that we feel more cooperative and more sharing and caring and we're more interested in the community. And so on the course, we have an online community where we all share. This is a global course. And if an organization has members of diverse groups that they want to collaborate, if those members took the course together, they would be involved in this warm, supportive community where we're all sharing about nature. And it can just turn the volume up on the activities and help the, those, those members. And that could be members in the same locality or it could be um, different departments in one organization or connections with other organizations. Um, it helps them work together more effectively because they get to know each other in a very simple, direct way while they're in this state of mind. So um, I have scholarships for organizations that are not well funded. I invite conversation. The opportunities are just limited by our imaginations, really. So um, please get in touch. Anyone that thinks this might help them. I'd be so glad to hear from you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm. That was really interesting. And of course, you and all of the other participants will be at the booth now after mm. the wrap up session that's coming up. So listen to all five of you today. Uh, six of you I think because we had we had two in one session or maybe maybe even seven thank you all for your participation um, and thank you to everybody who, who, who watched from from out beyond around the world uh, we hope you got a really good inspirational flavor of the variety and the potential of nature-based enterprises uh, that feature on, on, on our enterprise platform. So like I said, you can follow up with these individuals uh, at, at their booths and um, yeah, and send them a direct message. Over to you, Esme. Yes, so next on the program is a wrap-up session for day one of the Enterprise Summit, uh, followed by an opportunity for you to go networking again uh, or meet a chance to meet the MBEs at their expo booths, uh, as Isabel said already. And uh, I also want to let you know that we have another pitch session tomorrow uh, at 2.30, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, uh, hand over to Natalia now, to, who will give a recap of today's events. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello again. Uh, it's already 30 degrees of Celsius in Poznań now, so if you were here, we would probably go to the river now, uh, but unfortunately we cannot. Uh, but I hope you had a very fruitful and informative day, uh, and now it's time to wrap up. What we had today, uh, on the first moment uh, of the opening workshop chaired by Mark Marcus Collier, we heard uh, from, the John Bell, from John Bell, the Director General of Healthy Planet at the European Commission, who talked about the transformative systemic change underway with the European Green Deal as nature-based solutions move from niche to norm. So it seems that the European Commission is giving a clear signal uh, that they are fully supportive uh, of this transition and encouraging all of us, the citizens, policymakers, researchers, uh, planners, enterprises, to really consider how we address the task uh, of our time of making peace with nature, how we need to rethink and redesign our public spaces to manage risk as well as provide social and community, community benefits. To this end, we need nature-based solutions, uh, and to provide nature-based solutions, we need a nature-based economy and nature-based enterprises. The timing of our summit here and the discussions here today are well aligned. We were also delighted to have been able to show you a little of Poznan uh, at the opening session. And uh, thanks to our mayor, Jacek Jaskowiak, uh, for his support when it comes to implementing nature-based solutions in Poznan. And the support for the nature-based enterprise strategy that is being de developed in our city. 
Next, our communities of uh, practice workshop attracted great interest throughout the morning and early afternoon. Of course, it was uh, impossible to get around all of them, but it was so good to see the high levels of engagement and interaction in the workshops that I managed to get into. Some really interesting points emerged to, from these workshops, one uh, or two I will mention here. During the Smart Tech workshop, Angus made, made the point for any new business starting out refining your message and being really clear in your communication is a critical skill to develop particularly when it comes to applying for funding. Well, indeed, it is a skill that applies across the board uh, to any of us ha who have ever uh, written a funding proposal. In water management session, a key point identified was uh, small scale projects can reach very far and are the basis for the real implementation of nature based solutions in cities. And one more from the sustainable forestry workshop. Sustainable forestry certifications and clearly becoming a crucial way for ensuring we can maximize ecosystem services for all those involved in forest management, people and nature. With a wall of money expected from nature-based solutions, which is a quotation from John Bell, we need to make sure that investment is better directed to the right green initiatives by using these more robust methodologies. Well, it, could be, it would be great to keep quoting the takeaways from the workshops, but of course we don't have much time left. Uh, be rest assured, all of the sessions have been recorded uh, and notes taken, and everything will be available on, on, on the Connecting Nature website after the event. The policy dialogue was a very interesting point of today. The potential for the creation of uh, 30 300 uh, jobs in green buildings in Austria is only one segment of the nature-based economy, but this is really indicative of the level of jobs that could be supported right across Europe and the world when the right policy supports are put in place. This is what uh, the minister, the Austrian minister presented and which is really a good sign that economy and nature are aligned. This leads on nicely to the call we heard so much about today, about the need for greater investment in nature from both public and private sectors, and to start accelerating the green economy in the integration of nature-based solutions, and supporting business using nature to grow and expand, to encourage young people to embark on careers in nature and establish nature-based enterprises as viable career path. What is very clear in today's dialogue is the need for a substantive uh, increase in public-private sector investment in nature-based solutions has emerged as a priority along with increased public and private collaboration in nature-based solutions implementation along with a loud and strong call for entrepreneurs for nature. And finally, what a way to round off the day with an inspiring innovators who presented their businesses and solutions to us this afternoon. I am really looking forward to seeing the other five innovators tomorrow. And what does tomorrow have in store for us? We we'll start tomorrow with the Horizon Europe brokerage event. So if you are at all interested in developing your ideas for nature-based solutions or want to get involved for the first time in writing a grant application, do come along to this session at 10 Central European time. In parallel, tomorrow we are launching our first workshop on developing natural playgrounds in public space. This has been a really successful nature-based solutions project for us in Poznan, and we are happy to share the learnings with you tomorrow. Developing skills and capacity is the key to the growth and sustainability of any business, enterprise or organization. So tomorrow we will be running a series of capacity building workshops and a wide range of topics that will be of interest of anyone, I am sure. We look forward to welcoming you back tomorrow and thank you all for being with us today. Have a great evening and see you tomorrow at 9.45. Thank you a lot.